Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Kasha Suarez, and today I'm diving into a topic that's becoming more relevant in recent times. Tips for buying a business during a downturn market. Whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur looking for opportunities or an investor seeking to expand your portfolio, understanding how to navigate a downturn market can be key to your success. So let's embark on this journey together and explore some invaluable tips and strategies. Now, before we begin, make sure you hit that notification bell and the subscribe button so you don't miss any valuable content from me. Ready to begin? Let's get started. To kick things off, let's address the elephant in the room. Why even consider buying a business in a downturn market? Well, my friends, there's a silver lining in every cloud and the same goes for economic downturns. Here's what you need to know. One of the most compelling reasons to consider buying a business during a downturn is that bargains are abundant. When economic conditions are challenging, many businesses may find themselves undervalued or struggling to survive. This presents a unique opportunity for buyers just like you. Here's why. Lower purchase price. Businesses that are struggling may be available at significantly lower purchase prices compared to what you'd find during economic upswings. This means you can acquire valuable assets and operations for a fraction of their potential worth. In some cases, you may find distressed businesses with valuable assets such as intellectual property, real estate, or loyal customer base. These assets can become valuable additions to your portfolio at a relatively low cost. Buyers also often have stronger negotiation power during a downturn. Sellers may be more willing to make concessions, offer favorable terms, or provide seller financing to close the deal. This flexibility can work for you and be in your favor. In addition to favorable prices, another advantage of buying a business in a downturn is that you're likely to encounter less competition in the marketplace. Here's why this matters. Fewer buyers. Economic uncertainty often leads potential buyers to adopt that cautious approach, causing them to postpone or abandon their acquisition plans. As a result, you face fewer competitors out there that are vying for the same opportunities also, with fewer buyers in the market, you're less likely to engage in bidding wars that can drive up those prices and make it challenging to secure a deal. This can lead to more reasonable negotiations and better terms for you. Then there's the reduced competition, which means you can take your time to explore broader range of businesses that are for sale. You have that luxury of carefully evaluating multiple options now and choosing the one that aligns best with you and your goals. While economic downturns can be challenging, they also provide a fertile ground for growth and innovation. Here's how you can harness this opportunity. If you have a solid business plan and the financial capacity to weather the storm, acquiring a business during a downturn positions you for substantial growth when the market eventually rebounds. You can strategically expand your operations and market share while those competitors struggle. Downturns often necessitate adaptability and innovation as well. By acquiring a business in challenging times, you have the chance to implement innovation and a lot of strategies, and you're able to streamline the operations and position the business for long-term success. Keep in mind that economic downturns are typically temporary. With a long-term vision and the right strategies in place, you can ride out the storm and emerge stronger when economic conditions improve. So there's three compelling reasons why buying a business in a downturn can make or be that savvy move. Bargains are abound, competition is less fierce, and there's a lot of room for growth and innovation. Now let's talk about the due diligence in a downturn market. It's a critical step that you want to do your homework before making that purchase. Here's what you should focus on. The first and foremost, the first important pillar of the due diligence process is scrutinizing the financial health of the business. In a downturn market, financial stability is paramount. And here's how to dissect the numbers. 
you want to conduct an examination of the business's financial records. This includes looking through the income statements, the balance sheets, and the cash flow statements. Pay close attention to trends over time and look for any signs of distress. Assess the cash flow of the business, essentially its ability to generate positive cash flow in adverse conditions. Cash flow issues can be a red flag in challenging economic environments. And you have to decide if that's a risk that you're willing to take with purchasing a business that might have cash flow issues. You'll also want to evaluate the business's debt levels. An excessive debt burden can become a significant liability during economic downturns. Consider how manageable the debts are in the current market conditions. The next pillar of the due diligence process focuses on understanding how the downturn is impacting the broader industry and where your potential business fits within the landscape. Dive deep into research about the industry in which the business operates in. Analyze how the economic downturn is affecting that specific sector. Some industries may be more resilient or quick to recover than others. You want to also assess the competitive landscape. Understanding how other businesses in the same industry are faring is important. Are there shifts in the market share or changes in consumer behavior that you should be aware of? Also examine where the business that you're considering stands within its market. Does it have a competitive edge, unique value proposition, or the potential to adapt to changing market dynamics? Lastly, but not certainly least, let's explore the critical aspects of understanding the seller's motivation. Try to gauge why the seller is parting ways with the business. Is it due to the financial distress, retirement, a strategic decision, or other factors? Understanding the seller's motivation can be a valuable insight into the willingness to negotiate and the urgency of the sale. Recognize that seller's motivation can impact your negotiation leverage. So for example, a seller facing financial difficulties may be more open to flexible deal structures or pricing adjustments. Also consider how the seller's motivation aligns with your acquisition goals. Does, the, does their reason for selling resonate with your vision for the business? This alignment can contribute to a smoother transaction. Now, armed with this essential due diligence checklist, you can navigate the complexities of buying a business in a downturn market with greater confidence. Remember, knowledge is your greatest asset in these uncertain times, and it will guide you towards making those informed decisions. Now, hmm, negotiations, the heart of any business deal. In a downturn market, negotiation skills become quite critical. So here's how to ace it. The first rule of negotiation, essentially in a downturn market, is to embrace patience as your trusted ally. You want to take your time to carefully deliberate each aspect of the deal. Rushing can lead to unfavorable outcomes. Understand that in a buyer's market, you have the advantage of time on your side. You want to conduct the thorough evaluations of the terms, the conditions, and contingencies and ensure that you understand all the implications of each element before making concessions or commitments. Also, leverage your research and due diligence findings during the negotiation. Use them as supporting evidence for your position. This will demonstrate your commitment to making an informed decision. In a downturn market, flexibility is also key because it can unlock successful negotiation. Consider the following strategies. Be open to offering creative deal structures that benefit both parties. For example, consider earnout arrangements where part of the purchase price is contingent on future performance. Such arrangements can provide assurance to the seller and align your interests. You can also try to incorporate or negotiate contingencies into the deal. Given the uncertainties of the market, having clauses that outline what happens if certain conditions or milestones aren't met can be very helpful and can safeguard your investment. Lastly, let's explore contingency plans and how they are part of the negotiation process, especially in the backdrop of an economic downturn. Recognize that not all negotiations will lead to a successful deal. 
Have a contingency plan ready in case negotiations fall through. This plan can involve pursuing other acquisitions or reevaluating your business strategy. Your contingency plan should also include risk mitigation strategies. Understand the potential risks associated with the deal and have strategies in place to address them, whether it's financial risks, market volatility, or operational challenges that are being prepared is the key. Also remain adaptable throughout the negotiation process. Conditions can change rapidly in the downturn market and your ability to be able to adjust your negotiation approach in response to new developments can be a valuable asset. Now, as we continue our journey through the intricacies of buying a business in a downturn market, let's shine that spotlight on a pivotal aspect of financing your acquisition. In a landscape where traditional financing may, may be more challenging to secure, it's essential to explore all the other range of financing options that can help with your unique circumstance. Our first stop is the Small Business Administration, or SBA loans. An enticing option and essentially in uncertain times. The SBA loans often offer favorable terms, including competitive interest rates and longer repayment periods. These terms can ease the financial burden of acquiring a new business during a downturn. SBA loans typically require lower down payments compared to conventional financing options. This can free up some capital that can that you can then allocate elsewhere to support your business's growth. SBA loans are partially guaranteed by the government, providing a level of security to the lenders. This guarantee can make lenders more willing to extend their credit even in challenging economic times. Our next financing avenue takes us into the realm of seller financing, which can be a powerful strategy that signifies confidence in the business's potential. Seller financing can be a win-win arrangement where the seller provides a portion of the financing. This demonstrates the seller's belief in the business's future success and can foster that trust between both parties. Negotiating seller financing allows for flexibility in terms such as interest rates and repayment schedules. This flexibility can align the financing structure with the business's performance. And in uncertain economic climates, seller financing can help mitigate the risk for the buyer as the seller shares in the business's performance and success. Now our final stop explores the world of private investors and angel investors an avenue that can inject fresh capital and expertise into your venture. Private individuals can provide access to much needed capital. When traditional lenders may be cautious, their investment can bolster your financial resources. Beyond capital, private investors often bring valuable industry knowledge, also networks and strategic insights to the table. This can be particularly beneficial in navigating a downturn market as investors who see potential in your venture are likely to be aligned with your long-term goals. Then they have that vested interest in the business's success and can help create a stronger partnership. In the downturn market, the ability to explore diverse financing options is strategic and advantageous. Whether you offer SBA loans, negotiate seller financing, or seek investment from private individuals, remember that the right financing choice can set the stage for your business's success. Now, one thing that I've learned from history is that businesses that adapt and innovate tend to thrive even more in challenging times. So here's how to embrace the adaptability. The first element of adaptability is the art of pivot. Being open to change, transformation, and evolution. Consider altering your business model if the situation demands it. Perhaps there's an untapped niche that you're looking at or a shift in the market demand that suggests a different approach. Pivoting can breathe on new life into your business venture. Also diversifying your products or services. This can be a game changer. Expanding your offerings to meet evolving customer needs can lead to new revenue streams that you didn't think of and market resilience. The second pillar of adaptability is diligent cost control, a practice that keeps your financial ship sailing smoothly. So take a meticulous look at your expenses. Identify areas where you can trim costs 
without compromising quality or customer satisfaction. This can help enhance your business's profitability. Additionally, optimize your resources, both human and financial. Allocate them strategically to initiatives that drive growth and value. In certain times, resource efficiency is your ally. Now, the final aspect of adaptability is customer-centric approach, a compass that is able to point you in the direction of success. So tune to your customers' needs, their desires, and their feedback. Actively listen to their voices. This can be a valuable insight and opportunities for improvement. Use these insights that you gain from customer feedback to then adapt your offerings and services. Satisfied customers not only stay loyal, but they become advocates for your brand and they bring referrals. Prioritize the customer experience in a downturn market, exceptional service, and seamless customer journey can set you apart from your competitors. Remember that the ability to pivot, control costs, and focus on your customers isn't just a survival tactic. It's a formula for growth and prosperity, even in challenging economic times. Finally, remember that the success of your business is a team effort, so surround yourself with the right people. You want to seek guidance from experienced mentors, consultants, and advisors who have gone through economic storms. Hire and retain talented employees who can help your business thrive, even in challenging times. Also, build a network of like-minded entrepreneurs and business professionals who can offer those valuable insights to help you grow. As I wrap up our exploration of tips for buying a business in a downturn market, I want to leave you with this thought. Downturns may bring challenges, but they also bring opportunities for those who are prepared, adaptable, and willing to take calculated risks. So whether you're embarking on a new entrepreneurial journey or you want to expand your business portfolio, remember that with the right strategy and the right mindset, you're able to thrive even when the economy faces those headwinds. Thank you for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button so you don't miss any valuable content from me. And stay tuned for more valuable videos on the business brokering process. Happy hunting. And until next time, bye-bye.